Alright, you're welcome back. So, okay, at the end of our class, for those of us that are very familiar with Python, you know what Dunder methods are? So let's just add one Dunder method here, which is the repo. The repo Dunder method. Have yourself. So, well, just what the repo Dunder method does it takes an object and returns it just. As a string, like the value of the object to be returned as a string. So we could have return self dot id. Self dot id. Remember how self works. Then getting the id here self dot id that's person id then let's also have the main name is self dot name because we are still dealing with the value of the class these values they belong to this class so that's self dot name okay now after creating our class there is one more thing that is needed for us to do there's one more thing that is needed for us to do we need to activate everything now we have created a class but the, the, the it, it hasn't actually reflected in the database even if we run our app at this point it's not going to reflect so the thing we have to do is we have to create we have registered our db with the sql outing and in sql outing we have to create all so that all the tables that we created you can create more than one table at a time all the tables we created and all the columns on the table will work so we have to create it but since we want our app to create the table that means our app must be running and our app must be active before the before the database can be created so we'll not just do db dot create all we won't just have it like this because our app is what is responsible for it it's not something that is running on its own so we'll have the app dot app context so it's app dot app context yes then so since we are app that's creating it, the function needs to be under app context. So with this now, you can run our app. You can run our app. So let's write something that will run our app for if main is main. This should be true because we are doing it if statement. So it means this after debug just for debugging so that when you get any error, so we'll would see it on the command line. Then app dot run. Although if you don't want to use this, you can also use the command line. So instead of using this, what you just do in the command line is come here and do last run just type last run but let's let's tag along with, with this first so let's run the app press control f5 all right you can see that our app is now running running on http 127 Point zero point zero point one, and it's running on port five thousand. Now let's go back to our database to check if the relations have been created, if the tables, or if the table we created has reflected the backwards slash dt. 
Now we can see the table is there. Let's check the details of the table. The name of the table is persons. Now we can see it has ID and it has name here. So we are good to go. The next thing we have to do is to start inserting values. Like how do we insert values into our into our database? So let's open the command line for this. Let's do this from the command line. You make sure the virtual environment is still on. Make sure the virtual environment is still on. Then you bring up the Python CLI. Bring up the Python CLI. Remember, on Linux, Python 3. On Windows, just Python. So what we are going to do is from app, import app. From app, this first app is the app.py. Import app. This second app here is this app. You have to import app. You have to import db, which is this. And the third thing we have to import is our class, which is person. Person. All right. We didn't get any error, so our import is complete. Now, to insert a value, would it, it works just like regular Python classes? Just re a regular Python class. That's exactly how it works. So you can even guess it before we do. But let's do it. To create a new class, we can say new person. You can say new person is equal to person. This person is the class. Okay, you can say name is equal to C J. Don't worry about the ID. You don't need to specify the ID because the ID is a primary key. So once there is an entry, the ID will automatically be encrypted by the database. So when you put in the first entry, the ID will be one, the second one, the ID will be two. You don't have to insert an ID by yourself. So new person is equal to person into bracket, name equals to digit. Remember the name is a string, so we have it in quote. Now we have to register this new person. And the database again it is the app that will do that so we go again with app dot app context then the first thing we do is db dot session you know when we run when we start running our app the database will be running on a session so db dot session dot add what do we want to add new person that is this new person that is an instance of this class you know this person here is a class this new person is an instance of the class so that's what we want to register the next thing we'll have is db dot session dot commit just like we have in our when we're using our cycle pg when we're using our cycle pg we have to commit every change that we need the same thing works here. We have to commit the changes that we make. db.session.commit. Press enter. Press enter one more time. Then we didn't get any error, so we are good to go. Let's go back to our database. Check. Select star from persons. Now we can see. The person TJ that we just inserted is now in our database. You see the table ID name that's one and TJ. It's here. TJ. Okay. So we could insert someone else again. Let's say person two equal person into let's say name. Is equal to uh silver line and I don't know just just move on to this then it's our app that is going to do everything for us with app dot app context 
in other versions of Python, this was actually not needed, but or maybe in other versions of Flask, but now it's needed. DB dot session dot add. What do we want to add? Let's see. Two. Then add P again. DB dot session dot for me. One more time. So let's check our database again. Select star from person. Now we can see we have the two names that we have inserted. ID number one, TJ. ID number two, silver line. So with this, we are ready to go and we are now very familiar with SQL Alchemy. Alright, before we go, before we go, I would like us to do something else. Since we have been able to create the database, we have been able to insert the value. Let's do one more thing, which will be like an API. We we'll still get there, but let's just have a practice. So we want to create an endpoint whereby we'll be able to get the user. We'll be able to get the user from an endpoint, whether from the browser or from the command line. Let's try it. App dot route. Then you put the endpoint here. Maybe I want it to be, you know, they're running on localhost 5000. So if I want it to be localhost 5000 slash person, I'll just put here slash person. Or if I just want to be localhost slash 5000, then I'll leave it like this. Then you have the index. Now, let us query the database. Let us query the database. Mm -hmm. So let's have here person is equal to person, which is capital letter, that's our class dot query. This is a basic Flask SQL Alchemy syntax. The basic Flask SQL Alchemy syntax dot first. This first is just to get the first name. If we wanted it to return every person in the database, we just put person.query.port. But for now, let's do with just the first person in the database. So we'll have person is equal to person.query.first. Then, after the query, we want to return. Um, let's return a string. Let's say hello. Person dot name. It has to be person dot name because this is an instance of this class. And this class, look at the class variable we have here. We have ID, we have name. So we could have person dot ID because we have person dot name. So let's return hello person dot name. Now we can save this. I think we should. We should stop our app and run it again. Hit Ctrl F5. <coughs> Alright, our app is now running. Ctrl F5. Let's go back to our terminal. So we can, we can just clear out of here. Just make sure the virtual environment is still on. Still activated. Now, what we'll do is Call HTTP localhost. This is just basically how APIs work. So call HTTP localhost. Let's put here localhost 5000. Localhost 5000. You could have localhost here or if you want, you can use 127.0.0.1. Do the same thing. So now we can see it has returned it here for us. Can you see it here? Hello, TJ. Okay, let's add a breaking line here. Let's add a breaking line so that whatever thing is coming up, I can move to the next line. 
having the line so be up run it again with control f5 and back to our bash okay now let's use http dot dot one two seven point zero point zero point one and the port five thousand the port on which our app is run you can see it here this is it here so oh oh there's a mistake here http slash slash yeah now let's try it. you can see it now it returns a hello and the name the first name in the database the first name in the database you can see it here it's tj and now it's returned hello tj now we are good to go and we are good to use a scale up game to build a big app so in the next video or in the next couple of videos we'll be looking at flask migrations we'll be looking at flask migrations and what flask migration does it it helps us to keep our data you know if we were to create a new what if we were to add a new a new colon here maybe we want to add students maybe student true or false we want to add students true or false how do you think you're going to do you know we we'll have to drop the database and create another one now plus migrate helps us to retain the data the data we have before this data we are going to retain it then a new column can still be created inside it so in the next couple of videos we'll be taking a look at plus migrate and i'm sure with this one we have a basic idea of plus sql and after plus migrate we'll go ahead to build the basic app with plus and that will be the first project in this course. Alright, thank you.